Good afternoon, folks. Hello, hello, hello. It is me. It is Andy Sanders. Uh, and I am here with you guys today to show you guys how to draw jungle animals. We had a vote on this last week, uh, and jungle animals won by quite some way. So we're going to be looking at doing a few things today, including the king of the beasts, uh, a mighty, mighty lion. Uh, we're going to have him eating something, but it won't be a hamburger. Let's uh, let's see what it ends up being. Uh, we're also going to have a giraffe, but not just any giraffe. We're going to have a giraffe with a jetpack, uh, because why not? Um, we're also going to have a dicky bow tie, and I'm, I'm going to ask you a very deep and very meaningful philosophical question about giraffes and bow ties uh, when we get on to drawing them. Uh, we're also going to have a very lazy, bored-looking crocodile uh, with a little tweety bird on top who's happy and singing away. Um, we're going to be talking about a couple of nice little details here about how you can make it look like characters have got more expression. Uh, we're going to be talking about the eyes and the body posture. Um, so there's going to be a few nifty things there. And also, actually, I'll mention the body posture when we are doing our giraffe who is bouncing around and looking absolutely delighted. Um, and also, 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 uh, well, I'll just show them. Th these are mine, nice and big and coloured in. Uh, yours will end up looking something like this. Uh, you will have a very jolly giraffe. Um, you'll have a lion on a rock, not eating a hamburger. You'll have him eating whatever you want him to eat. Uh, you'll also have, there's the, the crocodile and the Tweety Birdie that we're going to have. Um, but first off, uh, we're going to have another jungle creature. We're going to have one that is from my award-winning book. Did you say award-winning, Andy? Why, yes, I did, Andy. Thank you very much. Your award-winning book? Yes. Um, if you guys would like to buy it, you can get it uh, from my website, which is www.shortandsmiley.com. Um, it's mainly for sort of uh, kids between the ages of about two and five or six. Um, but it did win an award because they said kids, some kids as old as six and seven find it hilarious just because it's very, very stupid. Uh, and there are, say, baddies like a naughty elephant, dun, 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 who tries to steal an orange juicy drink. And because he didn't ask nicely, he gets squished by an ocean liner. And you can just see his tiny little tail poking out. Uh, one of these days, I will actually do a reading of this book as well. We'll have some fun doing that too. Uh, but right now, I just thought I would show you the elephant that we are going to be drawing to. And we're going to start off with our elephant today. Um, I have said to you guys, I uh, put a little message out earlier saying, do bring a few extra bits of paper um, because we won't necessarily be doing all these characters on the same one. What I'd love to do is to show you guys how to draw these and then you could put them into your own scene and you could add your own animals too. Okay. Um, so with that in mind, folks, uh, let's get started. Let's get our pens out. Here we go. Uh, I've got mine at the ready. And what we'll do, we'll start off with our, we'll start off with our elephant. Um, I'm also going to say you can put a little bit of uh, originality, in, originality, sorry, into yours too. Um, I'm going to give mine a little paper hat, but you guys could give all sorts of different hats, and I'll show you how to do those too. Now, when it comes to doing an elephant, the first thing uh, to start off with is actually the elephant's ear. And from there, we spiral out and we end up with um, the rest of the elephant fitting in around him. So this bit that we're going to draw here is going to start in the middle of our page. Don't do it too far to one side or the other, otherwise you're not going to have space for the rest of the elephant. Um, but this bit um, needs to be in the middle because otherwise we'll end up going off the edge of the paper. So here we go. It's quite easy to begin with. All you have to do is to do a nice semicircle down and then back up like this okay now it can be a little bit stretched it can be a little bit longer than a semicircle and mine's is mine's isn't a perfect semicircle it's quite tall um, but that's going to be where we start off with his ear okay um, what we then do is that we then don't join it up into a circle instead it's a quarter of a circle but it's really big and what happens is this quarter of a circle starts here and it ends up here, like this. So watch this. I've done my semicircle, and then my, my quarter circle goes up there like that. And that's where his ear is on the top of his head, okay? Um, at this point, we can then do whatever we want. And I like to give you guys the opportunity to be a little bit creative. Um, if you wanted to give him, say, a... Um, and I, I'm pop, popping a little post-it note down for you guys so you can see what's going on. If you wanted to give him a top hat, this next bit's very, very easy. Where you're, you, can, you can just see that through my post-it note, look. Um, all you have to do to give him, say, a top hat is to do a little curve like this. Okay, a really nice gentle one. And then we do a tiny little C on that side, a little letter C. And then another backwards one there. And then we just do the exact same shape that we did at first. There we go, like so. And then a top hat is really, really easy to draw. It starts off narrow at the bottom, then it gets wider at the top. So you just do a nice, big, tall flick like that. Okay. Um, and here we go. Same on the other side. Like that. 
okay and then we do a gentle curve going upwards like so and that's our top hat okay so if you wanted to give them a top hat you can do we always tend to have a little ribbon on a top hat too again just a gentle little curve down like that um if you want to give your elephant a top hat that's fine i'm not doing that today for me i'm going to do a paper hat uh, made out of paper um, so the way that I'm going to do that instead, where I've just done my little quarter circle, or my big quarter circle, I should say, uh, we're going to put in a line. And it's not perfectly straight up. It's ever so slightly, ever so slightly, this little line is ever so slightly tilted one way. OK, um, I'm then going to draw along. It's going down ever so slightly on an angle like so. OK, it's not perfectly flat. It's just going down a teensy weensy bit. Oh, hello there, guys. Yes, we've got lots of people saying hi. Hi, Alex and Daniel. Um, hi Fletcher and Flo and, and Bree. Nice to see you guys today. And and Fletcher's daddy. Hi Fletcher's daddy. I hope you guys have fun. Um, and then once we've done this bit, we go up a little bit too. And all we're doing is making a rectangle. But this rectangle's on a tiny bit of an angle. And the thing about doing the hat on a little bit of an angle is that it makes it just look a little bit more interesting than having it perfectly square on. Very rarely, if you ever take a photo of someone, do they have a hat that's perfect and uh, sorry perfectly straight now this one's on a little bit of an angle and our triangle that we put on top this is going to be not right to the edge of our, our rectangle instead it's going to start around about there around about here so it's starting a little bit further in and then it's just a triangle that goes up like that and then back down and joins up there on the other side okay um, to make it look like it's folded as well we'll put a tiny thin line whee, down the middle there and that's our elephant's paper hat okay um, now, we need to do this guy's trunk. We've got to have that. That's super duper important. Uh, and the way that we do this is that at the edge of our little hat, um, hi Lexi and Serena and Harrison, uh, Dylan and Riley and Nathan. Hello, guys. Hello. Hello. Lovely to have you joining us today. Uh, I do apologize if I miss anyone, by the way. I've just got that many folks say hi today. Um, but here we go. So to make it look like he's got his nice big trunk, we have to do a curve down here right from the edge of his hat that you guys have just put in. And it's going to curve outwards. I'm going to move my paper ever so slightly. Move it outwards and then down like this. And then it curves back up. And this makes our trunk look like it is nice and long and it's going to be sneaky too. Okay. Um, once you've got this nice little curve down, so it curves out and down and round, it comes back up and it finishes off by pointing in the direction that our elephant is going. Okay. So have a go at that guy's nice gentle bulgy outfit for the head sneaking back around and then back up um we then need to put on the actual end of his trunk because that they kind of use i don't know if you've seen this but elephants are amazing they use their trunks like hands and they actually use them to pick up food and stuff it in their mouth om, nom, 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 nom. Um, and that's what we're going to do we're going to make it look like it could actually pick something up so to do that um where we've just got this little flick that we've done we then draw a little curve that goes round like that okay so it goes up to the right round and then like that um, we can also then make this come back down so it's a little letter C a tiny little letter C and then it's going to be a similar shape on the bottom um, and at this point I'll guess again backwards letter C and it's going to curl around and importantly it doesn't join up okay it doesn't join up um, if you want to as well, you can add a couple of little nostrils in here. And that shows that our elephant has got his nostrils in there, where he, he can uh, have a snort and blow his nose on a hanky and things. Um, and then we need to put his expression on. Now, if you want him to be um, grumpy like mine, it's very, very easy to do. But I'm going to show you just a couple of other quick little eyes that you could do. So again, I'm just popping my uh, paper over the top here. You could make him look sort of cheery by putting two little bouncy eyes like that. That would make him look like he's bumbling along and have a little smile on his face and he's quite happy. Or you could make him look suspicious, like, hey, what's going on? I'm a suspicious elephant. I'm a detective elephant. Ooh, there's a story. Uh, he could be a detective elephant about to solve the mystery of the missing pancakes or something along those lines. Um, and if you want to make him look suspicious, very easy. You can do two little lines like that. And then you guys might remember this one. We curl down and then up. Hmm, they're very suspicious of these pancakes. Where did they go? What happened to them? Who ate them? Sam, was it you? Aloys and Isa, was it you? And Neve, was it you that ate them? Hello, and thank you for saying hi anyway, guys. Uh, right, so 
To return, I'm going to give him grumpy eyes, and grumpy eyes are dead, dead easy. What we do is we do a little curve like this, okay? And then that curve wants to have two eyes on, and he's mad. Brr. He's also needing another ear here, so we need to give him an ear. Um, but just before we do, I'm going to pop, and this is going to be level, by the way, with the bottom of his ear. I'm going to put, uh, pop a tusk on there, because elephants have tusks. Or at least they do when they're fully grown anyway. Baby elephants don't, but grown-ups do. And that's just almost like a little sausage that's poking around. If you want to make it pointy, you can do, but mine's just curvy. We then do a nice big ear that comes around, and that's just a gentle curve that comes around and goes behind his ear like so. Okay. Um, we'll come back to his other tusk in a second, but what we need to do next is get our elephant looking like he's stomping along and marching. Okay. And to achieve that effect, what we have to do here is to get a leg that comes up nice and high and it wants to come almost level with his ear. So where you guys did this ear before, like this, we're going to have a leg that joins off from that line and then comes down like this. Okay. This is his big, big stompy leg. And it needs to be nice and round, so it, it comes almost over to the edge of his trunk look, but then it curves back round like this. And that's going to be his big clumpy foot. It's going to go back up, but you don't want to give him thin weedy legs. Instead, we need to give him nice fat chunky legs because he's a, a big chunky elephant and he needs to um, do a big stomp. Uh, hi, Neve and Cillian. Um, and uh, I'm glad you guys are having fun. That's lovely to hear. Um, right, this chunky leg, though, it needs to come back round. And so as thick as this bit is here, this bit needs to be just as thick too, which means I can't keep going up and up with my line. Instead, I have to curve around. I have to go down. And just, you have to go past the ear. We do a little gentle curve like this, and that's going to be where his tummy goes, okay? Um... If you've done this and you've got his line on there for his, his tummy, that's super duper. That's really good. Um, what we can also do here, chaps, to make it look like he is a, um, a proper elephant with a finished tr uh, trunk, is we can now join this little bit up. So where we left this open, we now, we couldn't have done this before because we would have had to stop for the leg. But now we can go down like this, join it up. And it wants to get thicker and thicker as it gets towards the rest of his head. Really, it should get thinner and thinner towards the end of his trunk. Uh, we then, as well, can put in the other tusk, which I'm just going to have here, uh, popping out from under his ear. Like so. Arr, there we go. Grumpy elephant. If you wanted to make him look particularly grumpy or unhappy or anything, or you could even put in a little smile or, or a snarl or whatever. We've done snarls the other week to make characters look grumpy, so I won't spend time on that today. Um, but we do need to make him look like he's actually walking along now, okay? And to achieve that, we need to put the rest of his body in. Um, we're going to leave a tiny gap here. Uh, what we'll do is we'll have a nice big round bottom that comes all the way back round and joins up with the back of his, his head. But we need to leave a space just here, and it needs to be a nice wide one for his leg. So however wide you've done this leg here, we need to leave a similar gap just going upwards like this, about that big, because that's going to be where his back leg goes. Okay, in that space there. And so now it's going to curl all the way around and it's going to join up back here into his neck. And I'll do it first and then I'll give you a little tip and point out exactly where it wants to join up. So if you imagine now a big circle curving all the way around like that, okay, there's his nice big chunky body, okay. Um, but what I would say, if you can, just imagine, I'm going to use a little dotted line here. If you can make it so that it looks like the body would join up with the ear there like that, that is the best possible way to do your big elephant's body, okay? It looks absolutely perfect when you do it like that. It makes it look like a really nice big body and it makes him look like, even though you can't see it, he's got a nice chunky neck um, and his, his head is joined on really well. Um, okay, so if you guys can do that now, do a nice big round circle and then we will look at putting on his tail, okay? Elephant tails are funny little things. Hi Zara, hello. Um, I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. Um, we're going to do a little flick at the back here. So this little tail is going to be flicked over like that. Okay, it's just a semicircle sort of a thing. And again, another one underneath. Okay, and doing two close together like that is the best way to go because it means that we can then do his tail. And his tail 
is made up of lots of little um, if you know the letter J you can do this one in fact you know what? I'm doing my J's backwards like this I'm doing my J's backwards like this but you could do them the right way around all it is is the letter J over and over again and slightly overlapping that's how we do our elephant's tail okay um, and doing that again and again and again just means that you'll end up with a nice little elephant's tail that looks fluffy at the end and uses it to swat away flies really really simple and actually guys if you watched any of my other videos like uh, the other week when we did pirates or when we did how to draw giant food or uh, superhero teams you'll know that very often it's just a question of doing really simple little things and just knowing how to do them and, and uh, put them together it's not tricky right um, so this big chunky elephant with his big bum he is going to have uh, a big chunky leg going out here too and I'm going to make it not just like a perfectly straight line going into it I'm going to have it curving out ever so slightly but it needs to go nice and low down like this and it needs to be nice and wide okay a pro tip when you're doing his leg is to make sure that the feet are fractionally wider so they want to get a teeny weeny bit wider as they go down towards his feet his leg just wants to get a little bit fatter like that okay um, he's then going to have one other little leg at the back this leg is going to be pointing forwards um, he's got four legs so you have to have them all in motion and here we go this one is dead easy it's just curving around like that and then back up and then his other leg because he's got three legs now his other leg is going to need to go near the front okay so his other leg is quite easy um, just in this little space we've got here between the back leg and his front leg that he's got lifted up stomping along I'm going to put this one down you can make this one a little bit curvier though um because it makes it look like he's uh, just putting a tiny bit of weight on his back legs and he's about to move his front ones so here we go so this one is that sort of a shape and by now you guys should have something that looks a lot like a sneaky grumpy elephant okay um i hope we have an elephant um what i would like you to do guys um i would like you to uh, do a little doodle a little signature on there as well um every piece of artwork that you do should have a signature and so I'm going to put mine on. There we go. Um, and oh, I forgot. I'll give him a little bit of shade just to make it look like he's not floating on the page. But there he is. He's actually stood on the ground. Um, if you guys can do that too, you should have your very own elephant. Um, I'd love to see what colours you can make him. In my book, uh, I have an orange juice drink. He is bright orange, but you guys could make him so, you know, he's blue, green, pink, purple, stripy, whatever you fancy. Um, and uh, I would love to see those. So do keep those pictures safe and make sure you upload a photo of it onto either my Facebook or Twitter. And you can get your mummy or daddy to put the uh, the picture onto this uh, this page um, just by taking a photo of it on your camera phone. And I would love to see it. I am going to award as well, by the way, a prize. So what I consider to be the very best elephant that I see. Um, for the next bit guys we have a couple of other characters here. Um, I was asking folks what we uh, want to be doing. I got told jungle animals so we've got some really nifty fun ones. Uh, one of my favourites is the giraffe. Now <laughs> compared to the uh, the elephant which is very sort of slow and sluggish the giraffe is much more bouncy and boingy and springy and there's a whole bunch of fun things to draw with this guy, uh, including the jetpack that he's got on and the bow tie and just, you know, in general, his love of life. Uh, I mean, how could anybody that looks like this not be jolly, eh? So we're going to do that. Um, I'm also going to describe a couple of little techniques that we do just to make it look like a character sort of in movement and uh, and zooming along super quick. Um, and because he's a draft, you're going to need a nice tall bit of paper. OK, so turn your paper so that it is nice and tall. We don't want it to be wide, we want it to be tall. And chances are I am going to have to sort of shift my page up and down so you guys can see it as we go. Um, hi, Bethany. Hello. Um, Sarah, apparently your elephant is really chunky. That's fine. Uh, Emma, I'm glad yours is cute. That's lovely. Um, thank you, Eloise and I Isla, for saying that my elephant was lovely. That's good. Thank you. Right. But anyway, we're going to move on to our giraffe now who's going to be zooming around. Now, giraffes are very, very fun to draw. And I, oh, blah, blah, blah. And I always start with the head when I'm doing a giraffe. So this wants to be near the top of your page. OK, like there. Um, we want to give ourselves plenty of space. We're going to do a little bit where we've got some horns on top too. So don't start right at the very top. Give yourself a little bit of space here where your horns can go. Okay. Um, and here we are. Our giraffe is going to start. And if you have a pencil, you might find it easiest to do this little bit um, in pencil and then go over it in pen later. But I'll show you. I'll show you why. What it is, 
it's going to be a semicircle okay but this semicircle needs to have gaps and so I'm starting off my semicircle is going to curve around here but I'm going to leave one little gap there and I'll tell you where the gaps want to go so you can just wait for a second if you want guys okay now for those of you guys that can tell the time which I'm sure is many of you you will know that you can refer to places on a clock so for example if I said to you um, here's a clock I could say leave a gap at 12 o'clock which is right at the top so we're deliberately leaving a gap here okay and that's like 12 o'clock on a clock uh, you guys might know as well six o'clock is always at the bottom three o'clock is always at this side and nine o'clock is always here okay well we need a little gap at 12 o'clock which is right at the top and we also need a little gap here and that one is going to be around about 10 or 11 o'clock somewhere around about there okay so if you guys can tell the time or if you've got a clock in front of you now you can see one have a look at it and that will help you to work out exactly where to put those little spaces okay but otherwise it's dead easy it is just um a, a sort of a semicircle it's just got these gaps and that's going to be because we need to put on his on uh, on that put my teeth back in we need to put on his antlers because giraffes do have antlers okay so once we've done that we can then put on the rest of uh, his little face and he's going to be a very jolly sort of a fellow. Now, giraffes do have... Go away, Mr. Fly. Thank you. Um, giraffes do have a, a nice big smiley mouth and they have big nostrils too. So what we do here, once we've done our semicircle, we come down and then we go out and do a nice big bulge like this. And as we're swinging back around, we want to do it so it's going to join back up here and we'll stop just before we get to... Whoop, just before we get back there like that. Okay, just before we get back to the semicircle that we did. Okay, and the reason we've stopped there is because we need to do an ear, and we're going to pop our ears on. Then we're going to do our antlers. So here we go. Our ear on Mr. Giraffe is going to go out this way, and it goes like this. It goes a bounce up, and then a down, and flicks off like that. Okay. The bigger the longer the flick, the more floppy his ears are going to be. So it's up to you how floppy you want his ears. Um, it then gently, it's just one nice curve then, comes back under like that. And this is going to be our giraffe's, uh, giraffe's ear. Over here, for his other ear, we're not going to have it perfectly flat. This one, because he's floating around and wobbling his head whilst he's on a jetpack, this one is going to be stood upright. So to do this, it's almost like the letter S. And this one is going to be right on the other side of his head, maybe a tiny bit higher up, not quite level, but just a tiny bit higher up. And this one is going to go like the letter S, like that. And then it's going to be a similar sort of a shape to come back down. Obviously, make sure they're the same size. You don't want one big ear and one small one. But then it wants to come down and round like this. And there are his two ears that are going to be flopping about in the breeze. Um, we need to put the outside and the inside of the ear on and so to achieve that we just split the difference like that for one ear and then same for this one like that okay now he's got two big floppy ears uh, these these kind of ears also work really well by the way if you're draw, drawing certain types of dogs or if you're drawing cows as well okay because cows are very similar ears to giraffes uh, I've seen somebody say, can we do space aliens? Uh, we have done space and we have done aliens. Um, uh, uh, that's Niranjala. If you go back and check out the other videos on my Facebook page, you can see them. Okay. Um, right. We need to put his, ante uh, yeah, his antennas. I'm thinking of aliens. I need to put his antlers on now. And so to achieve that, remember these little gaps that we left here. Okay. We're going to put our antlers on and they're really easy to draw. All they are, they need to be going. If you imagine a clock, they need to be going away from the center of his head so i'm just going to pop this back here like this watch they want to be going away so you know like you'd have imagine a clock that's pointing up like that and up like that we're going to draw these as if they are going so this one wants to go boing straight up and you can make them get a little bit thinner towards the top if you want and then at the top just before our little lines meet we put a big round circle on and then this way we're going to have that going away from the center of his head And then a nice round circle on it, okay? 
And there we go, we've got our antennas and we've got his ears. We need to have him looking happy and joyful. Now to do that, um, in between his ears, and this, this should be ever so slightly on an angle, okay? Ever so slightly. We're gonna put a little bouncy curve like that. And then another one. And there are his eyes nicely closed with joy. He needs his nostrils too. His nostrils are gonna be further apart. And so they're gonna be near the bottom of his, his mouth. Uh, sorry, near the bottom of his nose where we did it. So there's one. And then the other one, it won't be right over here. And it's to do with a sort of a 3D effect that we're going for. Instead, it's not going to be right at them. It's going to be closer towards the middle. Okay. So around about there like that. Uh, we can give him a nice big smile as well. The smile is going to be coming off the side of his face. And this little technique here is one that I've stolen from Sean the Sheep. Um, if you want to make a character look happy and you can't really see their face because they're something like a sheep or a, a giraffe, then what you do off the side of the page, so this is just down underneath his ear, look. We do a nice big semicircle like that. And then we do another one, just a little bit smaller inside. And then we do a little circle in there like that. Sorry, a little quarter of a circle that one is. And I can call the rest in. And there we go. We've got him looking happy, like his mouth open. He's going, yay, I'm having a great time. Oh, Jackie Rachel is telling me it's horns, not antlers. OK, do they have horns? Yeah, they are. They're horns, they're not antlers. Uh, I might go back to calling them antennas that he's got on top of his head instead. How about that? Um, okay, okay. Right. Now, at this next point, this is where we're going to put our um, our bow tie on, our giraffe. Um, and we don't want it to look like it's silly. So here's the question for you, a philosophical question about giraffes. I'm just sketching this on here. You don't have to copy yet. Where does the giraffe go? Oh, sorry, where does the, um, the bow tie go on a giraffe? Does it go right underneath his chin? Or does it go down at the bottom of where his shoulders are? You know, is it going to be somewhere down here, like this, miles away from his chin? That can't be right, can it? That wouldn't be right. Should it be somewhere up here like this instead? So if I was to move it, say, a tiny bit further, should he have his bow tie here? It is a deep question, and I don't think anybody has ever got to the, the bottom of it. Where should a giraffe have a bow tie when he's wearing something really nice for a night out? I don't know the answer. I don't know if you guys do. Uh, but I will show you where I'm going to put it on my giraffe. And you guys can decide yourself. If you want to copy me, that's fine. If you want to leave it blank, that is cool as well. You don't have to give him a bow tie if you don't want. But right where his uh, his mouth is, we're going to have a line coming down like this. Whee. Uh, we are then going to have a little line coming down like this here. Okay. And we are going to put his bow tie on. And the secret to making it look really good is that we don't just draw it straight across. Instead... We curve it down gently like that. And we need to stop. And we need to leave a little bit of space. Because here, I'm going to draw a circle. And that circle is the tie on the bow tie. And then up this way, we're going to do a big, it's almost like a triangle that's just covered up by our circle look. We have got the little bounce on our bow. Same on the other side, little bounce on our bow. We've got a fly that is coming. He wants to join in with the drawings. He's forgotten his pencils, though, so I'm not letting him. Um, and that is how we do a bow tie. Now, the reason that we did this on a slight angle is because we then do a little letter C round the side of his neck. And that little gentle C that you do in the letter C is very, very important because it curls round like that there, and it makes it look like our bow tie has got a bit of thickness. We can then do, coming downwards, uh, the rest of his neck. And like I say, it's up to you how long you want to make his neck. You can have it, you know, a long neck, a short neck. Um, but it needs to keep coming down a bit longer because he's a giraffe. He's not a cow or anything with a really short neck. And at this point, we need to then put in his hoof. He's going to have a hoof, if you remember rightly. Look, he's got a hoof that is coming up uh, towards his bow tie like that. Okay. And so it's going to be coming from... If you, if you imagine you're drawing a straight line down look like that, we're going to do from just underneath the middle of his eye, something that comes up, bounces down, and curves round to the middle. Okay, That's what we want to do, because that's going to give him a nice hoof that he can stomp around on. Somebody's going to tell me now that they don't actually have hooves. Uh, I don't know, maybe they move on wheels or something. I've probably got that wrong too. Um, but they definitely have horns and not antlers as somebody was telling me okay 
Uh, yeah, that's right, Jackie. Thank you. Um, Okie okay, So, So once we've got that shape, that shows that he's got his nice hoof that you can stomp around on. But we need the rest of his leg to go in now. And that's pretty easy to do. All you have to do here, and I'll just, I'm making mine a little bit longer there for his hoof. I'm just going to make it so it comes back like that. Okay, nice thick leg. Um, his other leg, that's going to be pointing up into the sky as well, because he's really happy and jolly and bouncy. And this one comes and goes up here like that. Same direction. So it's pointing almost in the same direction as the rest of his leg. Uh, sorry, is his other leg. And then it curves around. Whee! This one is going to go like that too. But I've made mine so it's pointing a little bit further across that way. Whereas this one's pointing downwards. The bottom of his foot's pointing down. This one's pointing a little bit further across. Okay. It doesn't really matter which way yours points. It's okay. And then, again, I'm just going to put another line in here. That's joining up back to his body. Um, Okie dokie. Right, folks. We are going to now put on his jetpack. Um, his jetpack is a very important bit for any young giraffe. You can't be a giraffe these days without a jetpack. Uh, if you want to get to the top of all the trees and eat all the leaves, not just the ones at the bottom, you need a jetpack. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to make his back a little bit longer just so it's coming down. I'm going to stop just fractionally above where my line for his uh, his leg ends, okay? So here we go, I've stopped just there. The reason I've stopped is because I need to put in a little strap for his jetpack, and I can't do that unless I leave that gap. So there you go, you see. Uh, leaving that little bit of extra space meant that I've now got my jetpack there. I'm going to do one around the other side as well. It's going to curve round under the rest of his leg. And for those of you that are wondering, how do I know where to stop doing these little circles? Well, the actual answer, and I perhaps should have said this earlier, but I am, a, I am human and I forget every now and again. I'm doing a straight line for his back, okay? And I'm just, I've made sure that I've just left these little spaces for his straps. So his body then needs to go down and it's almost like a great big teardrop shape, his body. If I push his, his head up like that, you can see it gets wider and wider and actually his bottom is going to flick out a little bit and then it's going to come around and back up like that. Okay, there's our giraffe. He's got his nice long, uh, nice long neck. He's got a nice big body and long legs. And we want him to look like he is, uh, you know, bouncing around. We're going to put his jetpack jet on in a second. But here we go. His legs, his back legs are very, very easy to do. OK. The leg nearest to us is pretty easy to do. We just do it coming out sort of pretty much where, where his bottom is, really. Um, it wants to be pointing down like that. OK, so a little diagonal line coming out. And then that's going to be for the back of his leg. The front of his leg is going to start here. And it's going to be curvier. It's going to curve all the way out and around. Go back up like this. Whee! And actually, once you've done this, it's kind of like almost a V shape, a curvy V. It's going to curve back around on itself. And it's going to go behind that leg that we've drawn there. Okay, so his foreleg is thinner at the top and fatter at the bottom. Um, teddy bears often do this. They often have thin tops of the legs and fatter bottoms. Um, and then... We need to do the rest of his legs as well, his other leg. To do that, very easily, starting here, point down, get fat at the bottom, and then come back up. Okay, and there we go. So this is our giraffe who is jumping around for joy, having fun, having a great time. Uh, the last thing we need is his jetpack. Very, very easy to do. Uh, somebody is now telling me that the horns on a giraffe are actually called the ossicones. Um, I don't know if you know this about me, guys. I do go on game shows. I do win them every now and again. I actually won the chase a few years ago. Um, but that is going to go into my memory bank. And ossicones are what we have on top of a giraffe. So, um, yeah, I will make a mental note of that. Thank you very much for telling me. Okay. Cheers, Sarah Trim. <laughs> uh, right. His backpack, then, his jetpack, is going to go like this. Very easy. It's just a little sort of semicircle there at the top. And that's halfway between his bow tie and his straps. And that is then going to go down and it wants to go in the same direction as his back. So don't come down perfectly straight. It wants to be in line with his back. And then when we get to the uh, towards his bum here, at this point, it wants to curve downwards. And again, this will make it look a bit 3D. 
Um, the reason that we make it curve is because at this point, we then put on, and we don't join it up, we put on a little, it's like a teardrop, but pointing upwards. You see that? So it's like a teardrop or a raindrop, but this time the point is at the bottom and the round bit is at the top. Go away, Mr. Fly. We can then keep going with the jetpack. And we can also add an extra little bit on the jetpack at the back here. And we do that by doing just it's, uh, like a curve down there. It's like a claw on a velociraptor or on a falcon or something. Okay, and there we go. There's his jetpack. Um, final bit then is to give him some rocket energy coming out the bottom of his uh, his jetpack. Uh, somebody just said, "Wow, you are smart." No, um, I, I just pretend to be an idiot most of the time, and uh, actually, yeah, I, I, I know all I know all sorts of useless rubbish for going on game shows. That's just a, a little fact for you. Uh, right, here we go. To do the, the rocket so it looks like it's got energy, what we do is we have to use jagged lines here. Jagged lines, and they want to be all pointing away from your rocket pack. Okay, some over here too, just going behind his leg. But all of these little lines are aiming back towards, ultimately go back towards his jetpack. And you can even have it curving around like this to show. Oh, I think I've got a feeling my page. Woo! To show him zipping along. And these extra little lines here just give the feeling that it is actually made out of um, what's it? Rocket propellant. It's uh, it's like a gas that's evaporating. Okay. Uh, right. There we go. So sorry. Can I show the bottom foot again? Yeah. I I went off the edge of the page there, didn't I? Okay. Um, hello there, uh, Lee. Thank you. Um, oh right, did, sorry, I've just realised, did I go off the bottom? Somebody said that they had to do the bottom freestyle. I must have gone off the edge of my, my camera screen. I apologise guys, I'll try to avoid that in future. Now, for doing the colouring, I'm not going to tell you where to colour your draft. And to be honest, I don't think it looks good to draw the spots on your draft. I think it's always best to do it with the colouring. What I would recommend is you do lots of different size circles. That's always the best way to go. Um, you can do them all over his body. I recommend making the end of the ossicones, as we now know they are called, his, his little horns or antlers or antennas. Um, make those dark and do the rest of them light. Um, I'd also recommend don't colour in, put any spots on his face because that can kind of detract away from, from what you're trying to achieve. Um, so just put the spots all over the rest of his body, okay? But there we go. We have another super duper animal. Uh, we should hopefully be very proud of this. Woo! And if you're pleased with him, what you do is you put your signature on and go, I'm awesome. That's fantastic and then stick it on eBay for millions and squillions and billions of pounds, okay? And I'm sure that you guys have got some fantastic looking giraffes there too. Uh, righty ho, so I think we're doing pretty well. Um, what we will do now then, oh, I'm gonna have to go super duper quick on this, otherwise I'm gonna be way, 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 way over, okay? Um, I'm gonna do very quickly, I'm gonna do very quickly our crocodile, okay, here we go. Uh, crocodiles are super duper uh, fun to draw. This one's floating around in water um, and this is going to give you a couple of useful techniques. Now to draw our crocodile, okay, we need to again do this in the centre of our page. I'm going to do mine actually. I'll do mine a little bit higher up just so I've got space for my, my lion underneath. Um, and what we do to begin with, we do the middle of this crocodile's head. So if you've got yourself a new sheet of paper, this is a nice gentle curve like that. It's not quite a half circle. But it's not a quarter circle either because it starts to come down. And the reason it has to come down is because this is the front of his forehead. And we need to have a little bump next to it like this. And that's going to be his eyebrow. Okay. Um, we're going to put his eye in next. So his eye is a nice big round circle. And wherever you stopped for uh, this little, the very first shape we did for his forehead, uh, we are going to do the circle so that it starts in line with that and then ends in line with that. Okay, you see? So there we go. And this crocodile is a very, very lazy, knocked off crocodile. So we do a horizontal line halfway down his eyes like this. And to make it look like he's looking at us, we put in... Um, some eyes that are staring over to one side um, of his his eyes. That doesn't, make, that doesn't make sense at all. His pupils are to one side of his eyes. There we go. Um, 
And so what we do halfway along this, this sort of, it's almost like a pokeball, I guess, but halfway along this circle that we split in half, we do a little semicircle that wants to come right down like that. Okay. And then join back up right in the side. And if you're drawing small, you might want to just color that in in black, but if you've got the space, it's quite nice actually to do an extra little semicircle. And there, that looks now like he's got his pupil there and his iris all the way around his pupil. Okay. Um, we need to give him a nose and then we can put his, the rest of his, his, um, uh, his other eye in. Okay. Now to do this, what we do, we do a little bounce across like this. And then we do another little bounce because he's going to have a long crinkly snout like crocodiles do. And then we can do one shorter little bounce like that. Now this really hacked off crocodile is going to have his, um, his eye looking at us as well on the other side. So we've done this in the same point we need to do a little circle there. Halfway along we draw a line and then this time again we put the eye in the same way that we did before. Okay, and now it makes it look like our crocodile is looking straight at us. Um, we also want to give him an eyebrow on the other side and to do that we do another big bouncy circle. The big bouncy circle goes here. Um, and then we're actually doing pretty well here. We need to do his nose, but we've nearly finished his face. Okay, we nearly finished his head. So to achieve this, what we do is a nice big, it's almost a perfect circle, but it wants to go like this. It wants to touch like this. Um, and then that circle isn't quite complete because we put a circle inside. That's his nostril. And then over here we have another little bounce. That's the end of his snout. And on the other side we need his other nostril. But we can't see inside that one. So instead we just have a, a circle like that. Um, he's then going to be going down into the water. So there we go. We have a little bouncy circle like that. And then we want to do where his teeth are, uh, sorry, where his mouth is going to go in the water. Okay. Um, we can put in a little tooth like that. Mine's are going to be curvy, but you could make yours pointy if you wanted to. And then I'm going to come along and this is a nice gentle curve. It's not perfectly flat. Um, and as we get further back towards his eyes at this point here, I'm just going to do a couple of little teeth that are poking out of the water like that. And then I'm going to do a gentle curve, a different one here, like this, that goes around the back. And this is Mr. Crocodile's head. He's got a body too. His body is going to zoom down like this, very easy, gently towards the water. And then as we get back here, you can make that one straight. Uh, he's going to have a few little bumps on him. So bump, 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 bump. These are just gentle curves. And then we're going to do some little, uh, they the like the letter C, but they want to be really wide. Okay. And then here underneath, we draw some curvy lines, gentle curvy lines like this. And it gives the impression that he's floating about in water. Um, okie dokie. All right. What we're going to do as well here, chaps, is put a little birdie on top of him. And to do this right in the middle of his head, we do two little feet and these are dead, dead easy to do. Okay. Hi from Henry and Kent. Hello. Um, these feet are just a couple of little bounces and here we go. We then do three lines poking up out the bottom of them. Okay. I'll make mine a little bit longer just so you can see them better on camera. Okay, there we go. Um, and then what we do is we give him a nice round body. And like the giraffe, he wants to have almost like a teardrop shaped body that's got a nice fat bottom and gets thinner towards a point at the top. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start slightly to one side up here. And I'm going to go down, curve around and touch my legs that I've drawn. Then we're going to curve back up. 
and then I'm going to stop here before I get right to the top. And the reason is I need to leave a little bit for his neck. And I'm going to have this body curving down like that, and then I'm going to stop there too. And the reason I'm stopping is because he needs his tail. So it's almost like a teardrop. But there's just a little gap on that side there. Okay. So here we go. We're going to do a flick out, flick out, flick out, flick out. And that's his tail sticking up in the air. Now this bird is very joyful, so he's going to be singing. He's going to be really happy and cheery. And to make him look happy, I'm going to have him tilting his head upwards. When you're happy, you tend to look up in the world. When you're feeling sad, you look down and droopy. And that's super important for characters to make it look like they've got feeling and emotion. So to make this guy look like he's a cheery bird, I'm going to draw a little semicircle here like this. It's not quite a semicircle, but it's almost. It's a letter C. And then I'm going to leave a gap because that's where his eyes are going to go. But here's the important bit. His beak wants to be poking right up high into the sky like that. So I'm going to come back in like that. And then it's going to be nice and wide like so. OK, um, to make him look like a songbird as well, I need to put his tongue in. So, yay, big curvy tongue. And to make it so that you can see the other side of his, his beak, so you can see the inside his mouth, we are going to do an extra little line there, like that. Okay. Now, this little gap, why have you left a gap, Andy? What's that all about? Well, this is where his eyes are going to go. And there, like our giraffe, going to be a couple of little curves, like that, to make it look nice and happy. So he's looking up, he's cheery, and he's going to be singing a song. Uh, it's dead, dead easy to do this. All you have to do is to do a straight line down, Put a circle on it, and then here you can do a wiggly line that goes up. And then once you've done that wiggly line, we put some more lines. You can make them longer or shorter, it's up to you. But it's dead, dead easy. You can do that to your heart's content, okay? And that is our grumpy crocodile and our joyful songbird having a little tweet and a good time of it there. Uh, right. If I now sign this one, because we're done, I think that's looking like a pretty nifty crocodile. And I would love, love, love to see your versions of those two. So make sure your mum and dad takes a photo of them. And they want to put it on Facebook. They want to use the hashtag DrawWithAndy when they put it on. If they put it on Twitter or Facebook, I will find it through that. Okay. Uh, right. Final thing to do then, dudes, is this guy here. This is our lion. And this will probably take us to around about half past today. Uh, this is our lion. Okay. Uh, we're going to do this one. This is our final one. Uh, and we're going to have him having a nibble on uh, something on top of his rock. Now, the rocks are dead, dead easy to do. Uh, I've done loads of these before. But uh, our lion, OK, he's the bit that we're going to focus on to begin with. So what I will suggest that we do. Sorry, I've just realised I've got a... Sorry, just bear with me for one second. There's... Uh... I'm an Italian citizen as well, and there's details on that previous page that my dad wrote down for me one day when I was out of the house about my Italian citizenship. Anyway, random, but there you go. Uh, I'm, I'm English and I'm Italian. I'm both. Right, anyway, um, so, so for this bit, for our lion then, let's do this. Uh, the final bit is doing this guy. Now, to achieve a really good lion, you want to do this in the middle of your page. Uh, we're going to start with his mouth. Um, and his mouth is going to be like this. It's going to start off going out, curving round, and then back up. And that's going to be where his nose goes, and that's going to be his snout. Um, his nose itself is going to be sort of a love heart shape. So what we do, just to one side of this shape, we put in a love heart. I bet you didn't know that uh, lions had love hearts, did you? Um, we want to make it look like he's got his mouth open and he's about to enjoy eating something really tasty. So having done this shape, this sort of nice big curve, and our, our love heart, we then need to do his mouth coming down. And this needs to be a nice big wide open mouth. So it's got to come down and around like this. And he's going to have space there for some really, really big uh, fangs. Okay, And these are going to be pointy down like that on one side. And then they're going to be pointy down like this on the other side. Okay. Um, underneath, that's where we're going to put the other teeth, so he's going to have two there as well. But before we do the last one, what I'm going to do is put his tongue in. Okay. He's a nice big lion, so I'm going to put a big tongue in there like that. And there you go. That is our lion's mouth. 
Um, we want to be able to see the back of his mouth, um, just like where it ends. And so to do that, it's quite easy. We do a gentle curve like that. There is his mouth. All done and dusted. Um, he is going to have a... Uh, happy uh, jolly sort of an expression and so to make it look like he's got his uh, to make it look like he's got his um, big smile and a big snout what we do we then go to the other side so we leave a little gap here and just sort of um, it's meant to be just a little bit not quite in line with the edge of his his, uh, his mouth here just to one side and then do a curve that comes down and round and it's going to go all the way around his smiling mouth and it shows that he's got a lip as well. Okay, so there we go. Um, Mr. Happy Jolly Lion needs to be smiley. So to achieve that, we make him look like he's got some happy closed eyes, just like we did on the giraffe and on the birdie. So we do that one there and one there. Um, he has got some really nifty looking uh, happy eyes. And we need to give him a mane. Manes are so important for lions. Okay, so to achieve this, above his eyes, up here, we give him a little bit of space, and we put in a big curve that comes down and round like this, and then another one that goes down and round like that. Okay, just basically sort of two bumps, two circles, and then we go like this and like this. Okay. Uh, and if you guys have watched The Lion King, you'll know that Simba has this sort of uh, fringe that's um, parted across his eyes so that you can see him. So you, sorry, so you can see his eyes. Uh, we then do a little flick down here. Because his mane is going to be going everywhere. Um, and you can also do one extra one. This extra little flick is very important. Uh, it wants to go. It wants to start off halfway down this nice big flick that you did here that was part of his parting. Wants to go down here like this, like that. Okay. Now the reason that that particular bit is important is because we need to put his lion ears in, and his lion ears are very easy. They're just circles. Boing. There's one. And they're circles that are poking out from behind his hair. The other one is on the other side. So it's a nice semicircle like that. There we go. And we want him to have a really big shaggy mane. This is the hardest bit that we've done here. Uh, this is the trickiest bit doing his face. The rest of it is actually quite easy. Because all we have to do is go up well above where we've put his, uh, his face and his, his ears. And then we go like this. We go bounce up. And it's just a zigzaggy shape that curves around again and again and again. And it's coming round and round and round underneath his chin. And I'm going to leave a little space there, just underneath there. We're going to have a paw sat here, you see. Okay. And then we're going to do another one on the other side. And this one is going the other way. So they're bouncing out these little curves. And they're going to go round and round and round. Now... To make him look um, a little bit cooler, so he, he's not just going to have spikes going all the way around, occasionally, if you want to, you can throw in a flick that goes out and around like that. Okay. But even so, they still want to end up coming back down as little jagged shapes underneath. And these jagged shapes are really, really simple to do, but they want to meet up and just, like I say, uh, at the bottom there, where the bottom of his mane would be, that is where we are going to put in um, his paw. Okay. So here we go then, guys. It does look a little bit like Simba. And Helen there, I can see Helen Walter saying, you got it wrong. Don't worry if you get it wrong. Hey, I don't get everything perfect when I do my drawings either. Um, we're going to do a nice uh, jawline for him as well here. So this jaw, uh, where you had your little flick here that was hiding his ear, we're also going to have another one here. Uh, sorry, another little curve here that's going to be for his nice powerful jaws. So there we go. Uh, and doing it on that side shows that he's got a nice big jaw. And you can do it on the other side too. If you've got the space, that's great. If you haven't, that's fine. But there we go. There's our happy lion with his nice big jaws. Um, you can also put on a couple of whiskers if you want. If you've got the space and the inclination. 
That's grand, but don't worry if you don't. Um, and then what we're going to do is make it look like he's hiding behind a rock and nibbling on something. So what I would say, guys, is that we need to uh, put this pour in first. And this is why we left a little space here. Our pour wants to be a nice big chunky one. So don't make it dinky, winky and teeny. Instead, it needs to be a nice big pour. And it's going to be done almost like a semicircle. Comes down. And then once you've done the semicircle, so if you imagine the semicircle stops there, we then do a little curve back upwards like this. And we stop just before we can make it into a complete circle. So if I get my pencil out, you can see there, that would be a semicircle. I've stopped beforehand. The reason I've stopped beforehand is that I need to give him an extra little paw. Uh, no, paw? Pad? Pad on his paw. I think that's probably the best way to describe it, like that. And that one is a semicircle. Okay. We can then, over here, do another paw like that. Sorry, another pad on his paw. And that is your, um, your paw. Now, He's sat on a rock, so to make it look like he's sat on a rock, you'll remember this from the guys that were with me when I did undersea creatures, okay? Dead, dead easy. We do a zigzag line down like this, and we can make put some either side. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight, and in fact, it's always better if it isn't. This way, we can do him sat on top of a rock like that, okay? So if you can make it a little bit wiggly and woggly, that's actually a really good thing. Um, just past where he, the end of his mane is, we need to put another paw. So we're going to do the same thing here, but this one's going to be on a bit of an angle. It's a big semicircle like this, because round starts to come back up, but then it stops. And the reason it stopped is because it's going to be this extra paw here, like that. And I can continue on then. Okay. Put his other. Little pull there like that, like he's holding on. Okay. Now, I'm actually, if you can see here, I'm going to run out of space uh, on my drawing, but you guys could keep going onto an extra sheet of paper. Uh, and in fact, what I will do, just to make sure you guys don't feel shortchanged, if you want to see what the back of a lion looks like, I'm going to do the thing that I always say if you run out of space, get an extra sheet of paper like that. And we want to give this guy a nice. Oh, yeah. There we go. Right. I'm going to give this guy a nice big body. And so what we do from pretty much where we're level with his his mouth, we're going to come across here and then we're going to curve down. And that's his shoulder. Shoulders are really important. Lines are big, powerful shoulders. And then it curves down and back round. And like that. Oops, there we go. OK. So this is our lion sitting on his rock like so. We need to give him a tail. The tail is going to be flicking up, and this is an S shape, but backwards. It's a backwards S. And in some ways, whoa, this is what happens when you're holding a sheet of paper, guys. Uh, and in some ways, it's a little bit like the one that we did on the elephant. We then need to put a little pom pom on the end, and this is very similar to the shape that you do if you're doing a flame. So it's kind of like a curve and that bit's easy enough to do that's like a sort of a semicircle shape but this one it wants to start coming in and it gets wider and joins back up okay now i'm going to remove this bit because i just want to keep a close up on my lion uh, and i can move my page around a little bit easier um, but two little things two final details just before um, we sort of finish our, our little lion off uh, we want to give it um, our rock a little zigzag like so Ooh, sorry, a little zigzag like so and doing that just makes it look like it's sat on a rock that's in 3d and then you can then color this half in say a light gray and this half in a dark gray or this in a light yellow and this in a dark yellow okay um, he needs to be holding something so I'm gonna have him holding in my picture I've done a hamburger but I want you guys to surprise me okay um, again whoever does the best drawings for this session is gonna get a free copy of my book um, and I want you guys to come up with something really nifty that you could be about to eat and so to make him look like he's eating something we do a curve like this and then there is the other side of his arm and his hand is very very easy to do sorry his paw is very easy to do um, what we have to do is do a little semicircle, like so. 
that makes it look like he is holding something. And then we just do three little bounces for his paws. So one, two, three. Like that. And he can be holding whatever you want. Uh, the suggestion that I had today was a bone, like quickly. Bones are really, really simple to do. It's just a straight line with a bit of a circle on that end and a bit of a circle on that end. And on this side, a bit of a circle on this end and a bit of a circle on that end. Okay. And he's he's sat there quite happily with his bone. Now, on my sketch, I did actually do a burger. You could marry this up. You could put together what we've done in previous weeks and you could draw a super gigantic, delicious, yummy, scrummy burger. Uh, and if you want to, that's completely up to you. Um, we did this in other weeks and made it look like it was something fantastic that he was eating. Or, you know, if you wanted to do something along the lines of he's about to eat an alien or whatever too, again, we've done those in previous weeks. So whatever you want to have your lion eating, that is completely up to you guys. But there we go. Uh, we have drawn our lion. We have drawn ourselves our... Whoa, I have to flip back through it. Uh, our crocodile with his singing birdie on top and we have done our giraffe and as an extra today we have also done our super duper um, elephant as well so please put your illustrations up i will be sending out prizes to who i think have done the best drawings uh, this week uh, i want to see all of your fantastic artworks and if you could color them in for me make them bright make them bold uh, make them look absolutely beautiful and when you have done that get your mum and dad to take a photo and upload it to facebook and twitter or instagram and so long as you use the hashtag draw with Andy, D R A W W I T H A N D Y, so long as you use that hashtag, um, I will be able to find it and I'll be able to choose um, who has done the best drawings. Uh, I am actually a little behind. I meant to do this for the last two weeks and I've been terrible, but I promise you guys uh, this week I am going to do that. Um, also, I would like you to turn to your mummy or daddy tonight and I would like you to say, Mummy, do you think my best friend, such and such, would like to join in next week's session? Um, because I would love to have more of you guys doing it and having some even more fun. Um, please, can you make sure that you guys uh, tell your friends about it uh, and get them to join in next week too? So tell your mummy and daddy that your best friend might like this as well. And we'll have a go at that. OK, right. Thank you all very much. I hope you guys have had fun. Um, I will let you guys choose as well what we're going to do next week on Twitter. I'll put up some options. You guys can vote what we're going to do and we will have fun then as well. All right. Thank you very, very much. I hope you enjoyed this. And the video of this will be online later today in case you missed any of it. Okay. Thank you. Bye.